In Excellent Health, Setting the Record Straight on America's Healthcare, that's the name of the book. The author, Dr. Scott Atlas, MD, but also a senior fellow here at the Hoover Institution on the campus of Stanford. Dr. Atlas, what works about the American healthcare system when you, when you look at it in the larger sense? Yes, uh, that could take up obviously the entire interview. What works really is uh, in essence what uh, a lot of the book is about, and that is the actual medical care, both availability or access, as well as implementation or uh, introduction of diagnostics and therapeutic or treatment of diseases. And in fact, a lot of the, the impetus for writing this book was to clarify uh, the background information that people don't really have despite what has been said about the U.S. healthcare system, in the bottom line really is, it is superb in both access and quality of care. What about cost? Cost is an issue, uh, and it's well documented, and I concur with the documentation that the U.S. is the most expensive system for healthcare in the world, whether that's per capita or in any other metric. And this is really the, the uh, major problem with the system that uh, should be uh, at, uh, at where the uh, reforms are directed to bringing down costs. Well, Dr. Atlas, some of the reforms have been directed toward bringing down costs. Have they not worked in your view? Well, if you're talking about uh, the, the basic uh, Affordability Care Act or what has been now called Obamacare, um, actually when you look at the numbers, the projections under Obamacare are actually not that costs will come down. It was uh, put forth as one of the reasons why reform is so essential. Yet when you look at even the, the government's own estimates, Centers for Medicaid and Medicare Services, uh, and all the other agencies, uh, none of them really predict, project a decrease in health care expenditures compared to pre-Obamacare. So th this is really one of the ironies uh, of this whole discussion about health care. Well, health care costs have never gone down, have they? Healthcare costs, uh, and, and I think uh, you, you make a very good point, don't generally go down historically because it's not necessarily desirable to make them go down uh, for, for a variety of reasons, the most important of which is technology and medical care has advanced so much over the past 50 to 100 years uh, that uh, we wouldn't want to dial back the clock to, uh, let's say, when I was born in the 1950s, uh, you know, when the bedside diagnosis was the essence of, of the diagnosis, for instance. We want the technology, the technology, whether it's diagnostic or new drugs or minimally invasive, safer treatments, have actually been the, the boon for the quality of medical care. So there is a driver of costs that we really don't want to scale back on, and that is that actually things cost money. However, uh, there are ways to increase uh, the uh, kind of, and I'll use the word control of costs, but uh, uh, as a believer in free market controls, and that is let people decide what value medical care has for them, unleash competition, get rid of the barriers to competition, give the information access, and uh, by virtue of those kinds of things, as in every other service or good in the United States, the price does come down. And you, you may ask, well, what is the fair price? I get asked this uh, by my own children. The fair price is the price at which people are willing to pay for something. That's the fair price. Not, in my view, some arbitrary price fixing or price setting by some central authority. Are you a practicing doctor right now? Uh, I have been up until literally uh, one year ago where I moved from being head of neuroradiology uh, where I was for about 13, 14 years at Stanford, and before that, the previous 15 years, practicing clinical medicine and also doing research and teaching. And uh, one year ago, I moved full-time over to Hoover to work on healthcare policy. When you were a practicing physician, did you accept Medicare, Medicaid payments, and patients? Yes. Uh, now, I'll give you my own background, was I, I've always worked in an academic medical center. Uh, such as the Stanford University Medical Center and, and similar places before that. But yes, we did. Did they pay, did the government reimburse at a fair rate? 
Well, that's a, that's a difficult question to answer because it, it implies a subjective term uh, of fair. Uh, did they reimburse at a set rate? Yes. Uh, the rate was uh, arbitrarily determined. It was always significantly less than private insurance. And I guess one way to assess is it a fair rate would be to judge how doctors in general, not, not my own self, how doctors in general in the U.S. react to the reimbursement rate. And, and when you look at how they react to the reimbursement rate, the reaction is that there's a decreasing number of doctors that are accepting Medicare and Medicaid patients because, specifically because, of the low reimbursement rates, so, such that they lose money per patient. And as we all know from the old joke, you, don't, you can't make up for that in volume, losing money per patient. Dr. Atlas, you speak about, uh, in Excellent Health, uh, some of the barriers to what you call the fair market rate for, for health care. What are some of those barriers that you would like to see removed? Well, one of the biggest uh, kind of barriers is really the, uh, the third party payer system in general. And that is, the barrier would be lack of information. People use this good or service, medical care, and it's the only one like this, without knowing what it costs. You don't know what it costs till after you've already used the product. So obviously, uh, th there's no possibility of making a value-based decision on that. Secondly, essentially all of medical care, and this is a, a little bit of an overstatement, is covered by the insurance itself. So what I mean by that is the, the way health insurance has evolved, it's changed from the way insurance was intended, which is a way to reduce risk of exposure to unanticipated large expenses. And now health insurance is almost everything, aside from a small co-payment or a small, relatively small deductible for most people, uh, is paid by the insurer. So you don't really care what it costs because, quote, someone else is paying. Of course, you're paying in the end, but it's a very complicated indirect route. So the biggest barrier, I think, is that there is no, no, no incentive to even look at the cost. And when something is free, your tendency is, hey, let's consume uh, enough, uh, as much of it as we want because I'm not paying for it. So that is the number one barrier. The second barrier, I would say, are the, uh, the government-created uh, health insurance uh, coverages themselves. And that is that, as we know, the states in the United States control health insurance. So there's kind of two sub-segments to that question. One is you're not allowed to buy insurance from a state outside the state in which you live. And this, of course, is uh, nonsensical and doesn't really exist in other goods or services. And it's an archaic uh, kind of paternalistic way to view things that, oh, we're afraid that uh, you won't know what you're doing if you go. Of course, if you live in New Jersey, I don't know why those people couldn't shop in Pennsylvania or vice versa. That's one problem. So it sets up monopolies, and hence that is a barrier to competition for insurance. And the second issue with the states is that uh, there are now over 2,000 mandates, that is requirements for all health insurance policies in the states to cover things that many people, I think, rather obviously would never want to pay for. And I'll give some examples. Massage therapy, acupuncture, chiropractors, in vitro fertilization, when I give a lecture to people and the average age would be, say, 60, I would look in the audience and say, I bet most of the people here are not going to use in vitro fertilization, yet your insurance is required to include that coverage. And there's a lot of these mandates that are estimated to uh, ramp up the cost of health insurance by as much as 50 percent, for instance. So that's a barrier to competition because there's not the opportunity for people to buy the insurance coverage they actually want. Which, which would be cheaper. Uh, so so there, there's a whole host of these, these kinds of things that I think government had not, has an opportunity. A, a big one that I failed to mention, actually, is the lack of information. It's not just about price. It's about quality. There's no transparency. Uh, you, for instance, you go and you get an MRI scan, um, and uh, you don't know not only what it costs, but you really don't know who the doctors are. You don't know if the place has board-certified doctors, uh, people who have training. You don't know when you get elected.